Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com bringing you another video again. This time we're going to have Jack Fields tie in with us, going to show off some of his dubbing and show off one of his favorite sulfur patterns. Uh, Pennsylvania here, we're big sulfur fans in the springtime, look forward to fishing them every year. And Jack's going to show us how he ties his. Uh, tell us a little bit about it, Jack. Well, what we got going on is a size 14 hook, naturally. Sulfurs are 14, 16. And we're going to use some um, Conc de Leon for the tail, some electric wool dubbing called Butterscotch. And what I did was I blended some wool with some ice wing very sparingly to get some sparkle but not too much sparkle for when too much is too much. So that's what was the my frame of mind is was with doing that dubbing, and it also crosses over from streamers to nymphs to dry flies. So it's a really versatile dubbing, and I, I think you'll like it if you give it a try. I think you'll really like it. Yeah, I know we like it here, and that's what we wanted to show is that you can tie multiple things with it, and it's yeah. not just a streamer dubbing. Yeah, or... exactly. So we got. An orange thread, I like using this orange thread on my sulfurs, even on the, on Spring Creek, I'm in Central PA, and Spring Creek is my main creek that I fish, and we have numerous colors of sulfurs, anywhere from bright orange to a lightish yellow with a green thorax and a lightish green olivey wings. So we have at least three colors. So I like to uh, have each one of those different colors on hand. The, ta the tailing is light pardo. I'm just primping all the bad stuff off of there. I like to have a generous amount of tailing fibers. Usually a little better than a sixteenth, and that don't sound like much, but on one of these feathers, that's that's a, a good bit. So you just size the tail length to the hook, and when I do that, I'll go just a tiny bit shorter, and just a tiny bit. So what I'll do is I'll put the fibers at an angle onto the hook shank, the tailing fibers, instead of parallel with it. Because what will happen is, when you do it at an angle, when you take your initial thread wrap, what that will do is the fibers will catch and roll over the hook shank. And as they're rolling, because of the angle, they also spread. And you'll get a nice spread tailing effect as you do your tie-in. Just take that, adjust them a little bit, and because I told you that, they did not listen to what <laughs> I was telling you. You give them a little help there. There we go. They actually did do the roll. They just didn't. They stayed bunched up on me. The cocktail on's about the best thing going in tailing material. I don't hardly use anything else for it anymore. Oh, it's nice and mottled, very stiff. Really just holds it up there. I agree. So we bring our thread back to our tie-in point. And we're going to back up and tell you that the hook we're using is an 1170 Diachi. <laughs> Got all about that. <laughs> Now we're ready to dub the body. And if you watch the other shows we did, the other videos we've done here, um, you'll see how thin this dubs. It's a wool dubbing, and uh, you can really, it's like an ultra fine dub when you can get it on there. Yeah, so, and what we'll do is we'll take our dubbing and we'll just grab, and with your fingertips, you wisp it like that, and you'll just pull just a wisp. And what you'll have inside that wisp is a little bit of the ice wing flash to create just a little bit of notice, a little bit of attention grabber. 
So you wisp that on there. Put that down there. And as you make your first wrap or two, you want to take care not to wrap over top of right where the tie-in point is for your tails. Otherwise, you'll it'll tend to mash them down. And what you can do with this light yellowish orangey dubbing, I'm using this orange thread. What will happen is that orange will shine through this outer yellow. Got a little dubbing in mine. And give you a two-tone, a multi-tone body. If you can see that. And also take notice to how thin and sparse that body is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the wing, silhouette, and the thorax legs all in one go by using some CDC feathers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a ginger and a cream and I'm going to blend the two together to get a, a, a modeling effect with the tones for the wing. We're going to put this in a dubbing loop. So what we want to do is we're going to prepare our feather. We'll grab it by the tip and stroke the feathers out to a 90 degree to where they're all standing straight out from the main stem. We'll put that down. Then we'll take our other one and do the same. And then what we'll do is we'll lay them down on top of each other with the stems lined up like that. And you grab a hold of it, keeping them together. And I have a Marc Pettijan magic tool here. And then you can grab a hold of the feather and it grabs and holds everything all in line for you. Now, another nice thing about this is the body of this tool is clear so you can see the barbs and with dry flies we like to have a certain size wing for a certain size fly so what you can do is just hold this against your fly now where we're looking to gauge it at is where the clamp is itself because that's what's going to be in the dubbing loop and that starts our length of fibers so you just hold that up there like that engage it on your hook and what you can do if it's too long you just grab a hold of your feathers open the clamp up a little bit and just pull it out a little bit and then you kind of line it up again a little too long won't kill you because you we can adjust that on the fly which we'll we'll do that once we get her tied on but that's looking close enough so now what you do is you take and cut away the stem and what you now have are all of your CDC fibers nice and neatly lined up held in place and ready to go for our dubbing loop. When you're doing your material in this clamp you want to try to ensure that you have the material to one end of the clamp so as when we put it in the dubbing loop it'll be closer to the hook and we won't have three or four wraps of thread to get through to be able to actually start wrapping our material on the hook. So we'll create our dubbing loop. Put that on there like that. And with a dubbing loop, when you first create it, at the hook, the dubbing loop is open more or less like this is. So what I like to do is take my working thread and wrap around the loop twice. And then what that does, it closes it off and creates a pinch point that helps us hold the material in because it's not just open and loose. There's a point to where it's tightened down and it, it on its own holds the material in place. Because there's nothing worse than getting everything in your, getting everything lined up, getting your material in your dubbing loop, and you go to try and get it squeezed together and it falls out. That's just no good. Very frustrating. I do not like it. Sam, I am. 
So what we'll do is we'll slide this into the loop. Get it twisted. Good and twist it up. Okay, and what we have now is a CDC dubbing loop. The other nice thing about the orange thread is when we wrap this, that orange thread is going to show through these barbs and create the base color for our thorax. And if you're looking to match a sulfur or any other bug in this style that happens to have an olive thorax, you can either use olive thread throughout the tie or use your orange for the body, tie off and switch out to olive thread for a base in your thorax. Uh, it, it tends to work out very well. In a dubbing loop, it tends to trap materials. So what I'll do is I'll take a brush and just kind of touch it onto the loop. And that'll just grab the threads of the fibers and pull them back out from being trapped. And it just brings it out and you just get more use of your, of your material. So now what we'll do is when we're wrapping this, let me get it to the point to where we're on the hook and ready to go. As we're wrapping this loop, we want to take our thumb and pointer finger and preen these fibers back and up in this direction right here. What that does, it keeps the fibers from being trapped as we wrap the loop and it also creates the silhouette and positions the wing on the fly as we're wrapping it. So you just come down and from the beginning you can more or less just kind of wrap in place. And you just kind of pull back and up, back and up. Just kind of come forward very slowly, a little at a time. Actually, I'm not going slowly, but <laughs> slowly meaning don't, when you wrap forward, don't come forward in large wraps or you'll run out of space before you get all your tight, tight wraps you want. Right, tight wraps, exactly. Once you get to the end. Now this is a sparse tie, not intended for Rocky Mountain waters. This is more, this is a tie that's more intended for those placid glides where there's trout are laying there being really picky. This style tie has really done well for me in that style of water. The other nice thing, or another nice thing about the orange thread, when you finish off and tie off, the male sulfur has eyes that are like globules and they're bright, bright orange versus where the females have much, much smaller dot-like eyes. So when you create an orange thread head like this, you're essentially imitating those globules. And as you can see, you get legs sticking out to the side, a wing and a thorax, all at, all at the same time, all in one go. Now, once in a while, sometimes you'll have too many fibers on the bottom. You can take and just kind of push them away, or you can take your scissors and trim a couple of those off. And what that does, it creates a flat plate. And that style fly right there has caught me so many fish. And if you feel like your fibers are too long for the, for the wing, instead of cutting them, 
pinch them off about where you want them and then pinch them off like that. And what that'll do, and the fish may not notice this, but when you cut it, all those fibers get cut and it's square versus when you pinch it, you don't lose all those tiny little fibers and it's still a more natural yep. end of the, the fiber of the feather. Well, that's a great looking fly there, Jack. Uh, and again, another new technique that I haven't showed yet, so I really appreciate that. Um, like I said, a couple keys to it. Keep it thin and fish it because it'll catch fish. So thanks for tying with us again, Jack. Uh, we really appreciate having you here. I well, really appreciate being here. And uh, time. keep coming back. We'll have them back for more later on. So thanks again for watching, everybody. I'm Sean Holsinger. I'm Jack Fields. See you later. Mm -hmm.